President of the United States and Mrs. Reagan, Ambassador and Mrs. Habib. Well, it's a real pleasure for me. As first, won't you be seated, please? Uh, it was my first official act back in Washington to pay tribute to a truly great American. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here today to honor one of the most dedicated and outstanding individuals that has ever served the United States government and the American people. Ambassador Philip Habib, our special emissary to the Middle East, is a sterling example of the highest standards of the Foreign Service. His career is the story of a, a lifetime committed to the service of his country and to the resolution of conflicts between nations. And the most recent chapter of that story tells of his efforts to free Lebanon from warfare and armed occupation. Phil accepted this challenge without hesitation, despite the great personal sacrifices involved both for himself and, I might add, for a brave and patient wife, Mrs. Habib. She has just seen him today for the first time in almost four months. By his skillful diplomacy, tireless activity, Phil has led the efforts of this government to build a framework in which the leaders of Lebanon could once again protect the right of their people to security and freedom. What he accomplished was the vital first step, which made it possible for launching a fresh start in the quest for peace, not only for Lebanon, but for Israel and her other na Arab neighbors as well. Phil was not alone. When we honor him, we honor all of you in government service, diplomats, soldiers, analysts, and secretaries who've shown once again your commitment, loyalty, and skill. Phil might say that he and the rest of you were only doing your jobs. In fact, he has said that to me about what he's been doing for all these many months. I say that your efforts give vital support to the foreign policy of the United States, and our nation owes you all a debt of gratitude. The Presidential Medal of Freedom is the highest civilian award that is given in the United States. What the Olympic Gold Medal is to athletes, what the Congressional Medal of Honor is to the military, the Presidential Medal of Freedom is to the private United States citizen. The names of those who have received this honor are stars in the American sky. Omer Bradley, Carl Sandburg, Helen Keller, Dr. Jonas Salk, Bryce Harlow, just to name several of them. But I'm going to read the citation. As the President's Special Emissary, Ambassador Philip C. Habib came out of retirement in 1981 to serve his country in the pursuit of peace and justice in the Middle East. His successful negotiation of the ceasefire in Lebanon and the res resolution of the West Beirut crisis stands out as one of the unique feats of diplomacy in modern times. Ambassador Habib's efforts, conducted in the most difficult and trying of circumstances over a period of months, not only brought honor and respect to the United States, but also won for him worldwide admiration. Of the greatest importance, Philip Habib's mission saved the city of Beirut and thousands of innocent lives and brought us one step closer to peaceful resolution to the Arab-Israeli conflict. We will put the emblem in the sink of Tim Powell. And never expect. Because that would work even through. I'm not sure that you could carry that out. But, I <laughs> but Bill, I just want to say, on behalf of all the people from there, thank you for 
rooted service above and beyond the call. And this goes for real life. I know sat here with the rest of us watching television sometimes and we wondered if we hadn't thought to be giving the combat pay. <laughs> but thank you and God bless you. President, Mrs. Reagan, ladies and gentlemen, and my friends, the President has been kind enough to allow me to say a few words after that uh, very distinguished introduction that he gave me. You honor me very greatly, Mr. President. It's a long way, as I once said, for a boy from Brooklyn via Idaho out to California and then here. But I wouldn't let this occasion go by without, of course, saying that whatever we accomplished, as you know, was a team effort. Uh, my right-hand man, Morris Draper, who's sitting right over here. I used to say half jokingly that uh, Morris did all the work and I got all the credit. Uh, I don't know whether he thought it was half jokingly or not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the team was a great one. And there was no one on the team that I and Morris appreciated more than you, Mr. President, for the very simple reason that uh, <clears throat> you told us what to do and then you gave us the leeway to do it. And uh, George Schultz, Secretary Schultz, uh, backed us completely in those very tense days of the last few weeks. And in the, in the end, we succeeded in doing what you had asked us to do. Uh, it's particularly fitting, considering that my mother and father came from Lebanon, that their son had something to do with uh, bringing a bit of, bit of peace to that harried land. There still is a great deal to do. The situation remains extremely tenuous. Each morning I pick up the traffic and read it, wondering if something might go wrong, so we have to start all over again, but so far we're on track. I am a chronic optimist, Mr. President, and I'm convinced that it's gonna stay on track, and it's gonna stay on track partly because of the initiative you most recently took with respect to peace in the Middle East. There is no more worthy cause. There is no more subject worthy of greater concern on the part of the United States than the cause of peace in the Middle East. Peace and justice for all the nations in the Middle East is what all of us have striven for for many years. And under your leadership, and that of Secretary Schultz, I would hope that will be with us very soon. Other than that, just let me say again, thank you very much for this honor, and thank you on behalf of not only myself, my family, my only grandchild, who's been quiet all the while, <laughs> but also on behalf of all my colleagues in the Foreign Service who made me what I am today. <laughs>